Welcome back to Maintenance Monday. A nice, easy one for you today. We've got five simple tips to help you avoid having brake failure, because nobody wants that. First tip on our list is to check your brake hoses if you've got hydraulic brakes or the housings and the inner cable if you've got cable brakes. It's important to check these for damage and wear, particularly around the head tube area where the handlebars turn and it can cause excessive wear on the hosings and the houses. In the instance of hydraulic brakes, you're going to need to make sure there's no damage to the outer surface that runs all the way through to the inner surface. If it is damaged significantly, that's gonna allow moisture to get into the system, which is gonna cause the brakes to become less effective. And in an emergency or an extreme braking situation, when there's lots of pressure through the brake, it could cause the hydraulic fluid to leak and render your brakes pretty much useless. In terms of a cable operated brake, we're gonna to need to look out for pretty much the same things. However, if the cable is worn or damaged enough that it's gone through this outer surface, you can see we've got this metal inner exposed. This is again going to allow moisture into the system, which is going to corrode everything. That's certainly what we want to try and avoid. Also, if the outer housing is damaged enough, it's going to start to wear away at the inner cable. Now, this is a gear cable, but it gives you a pretty clear example of what to expect. You can see some of the individual strands have started to break and fray. Now, this isn't really going to cause the brake to fail. However, leave this to get worse and worse. And over time, eventually, when a lot of pressure is put through the brake lever, you do run the risk of this cable snapping. And again, your brakes are going to be pretty useless. Simple solution, keep an eye on everything, and when it's got any damage or wear, look to get it replaced. Next up, you're not only going to want to check your brake pads for wear, but also for damage. Now, in the instance of rim brake pads and disc brake pads, the friction material will gradually wear away over time. For your disc brake pad, you're going to want to look to replace it when the friction material wears less than one millimetre thick. If you allow it to wear completely away, you'll be down to this metal backing plate, which is going to offer very little in terms of brake performance. In terms of the rim brake pad, many of them will have little grooves worn into them that you can see here. And as they have worn away and the pad is completely smooth, that's when you need to look to replace your brake pads. In the similar instance to the disc brake pad, if you allow it to wear completely away, then you're gonna be down to the metal housing which holds it in place, and you're gonna have a very poor performing brake, which is dramatically gonna increase your stopping distance. In addition to that, you also wanna to look to check the face of the brake pad, both the disc brake one and the rim brake one, to make sure there's no deep grooves or scoring in there and any damage that is gonna deteriorate and take away from its brake performance. Next up, now though your brake pads are designed to be a consumable part, over time and just through normal use, they will of course still wear away at the braking surface of the wheel or the rim, but also the disc rotor itself. In the instance of a rim brake bike, over time, this braking surface will become worn and uneven. When it gets to this point of wear, that the side of the rim is concaved in and it's no longer flat, that's when you're gonna to need to look to replace this. Now, on this rim that we've got here, you can see we've got this deep groove which runs all the way around the edge of the rim. And this is the wear indicator. Once the rim is worn away enough that this groove becomes completely flat and we can no longer see it, that's when we need to look to replace it. Now, depending on what type of wheel rim or the manufacturer of your wheel, some of them may have little dots placed around the surface of the rim, and that will give you an indicator as well. In the instance of a disc brake rotor, many of these will have stamped onto the side the minimum thickness that they're allowed to be. And then when it drops below that minimum thickness, that's where you need to look to replace it. In terms of measuring this, unfortunately, your normal tape measure just isn't gonna cut it. So you need to use a vernier caliper or a micrometer to get the most accurate reading possible. And in the instance of this Shimano rotor, it needs to be replaced when it's at a thickness of less than 1.5 millimeters. Now, if you don't have a vernier caliper or a micrometer, which let's face it, lots of people don't, then you can just head down to your local bike shop and they'll be able to measure your disc brake rotors, check that they're all right. And if you've got a rim brake bike, we can head down to your local bike shop as well and they'll be able to advise you on the wear rate of your rim. We're gonna have to do something about that. Let me sort it out.
Next tip is all down to you, the rider, because through improper use, even the best brakes or the most well-maintained brakes aren't gonna work correctly if you don't use them correctly. This is mostly gonna be apparent on really long testing descents, such as making your way down a mountainside. So if you're dragging the brake continually, this is gonna cause excessive heat to build up into the system. This is the same for rim brakes and disc brakes. Excessive heat build up is gonna cause glazing of the brake pads and the rotor or the rim brake surface. That's gonna cause you to have to apply additional force through the brake lever. That in turn is gonna cause even more heat to build up. Now in the instance of a disc brake bike, that excessive heat could eventually lead to the boiling of the brake fluid itself, which is gonna lead your brake to have pretty much zero effectiveness at slowing you down. In terms of a rim brake bike, the excessive heat build up and glazing of the pads and the rim surface could eventually cause the brake pad to stick onto the rim surface or in the instance of a carbon rim, start to cause the carbon to delaminate. Now this is something you really want to avoid happening. These brakes don't work. Now this isn't really gonna be a problem on an aluminium rim because they dissipate heat slightly more effectively than a carbon wheel set. Now Ollie and I actually took dragging the brakes to the extreme on the Eurobike, which is disc brake equipped, when we were out in Spain a few months ago and it didn't end very well for the bike. The easiest solution is to avoid dragging the brakes. So you can allow the bike to roll on any of the straights. That will cause the system to cool down and allow your brakes to maintain at their usual operating temperature. Now, if you can't help but drag the brakes all the time, then you are gonna have to stop partway down the descent and let the brakes cool down. However, the easiest solution is just to allow the bike to roll through any straight sections and then the brake can cool down, ready to slow you down for the next corner. Final tip is to avoid contamination of the brake components when using bike cleaners or lubricants. Now our brakes work by generating friction, so if we get any products on them which are designed to reduce friction, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to realise that it's going to result in a poor performing brake which is going to take a considerable longer time to slow you down than it otherwise would. In terms of your general bike cleaners or your degreasers, I wouldn't be too concerned about getting those over some components of the brake system, provided that you wash it off with plenty of clean water. However, products such as silicon sprays, lubricants, greases and oils, these are gonna soak into the brake pads in particular and cause them to be ineffective. And it's gonna be pretty difficult to wash these off, even if you tried to use a disc brake cleaner or an isopropyl alcohol. In terms of the disc brake rotor or the rim brake surface, you can quite often clean these up, but the pads themselves are gonna soak those products up and gonna to need to be replaced. So those are my tips on how to avoid brake failure. Follow those and hopefully you'll keep safe. Now, if you've got any tips of your own, let us know in the comments section down below. And if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and you know what else to do. Click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss any future videos. See you later.